Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Blue if you're new here and today's video is going to be sharing 30 simple swaps to make your home more sustainable. 30 is quite a big number so I think let's just hop right into the video. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already and let's just hop straight in. This video is sponsored by Octopus Energy which I'll be talking a little bit more about later on in the video. So follow your city's waste guides. This is so important because every city, every town, every borough has its own waste guidelines and a lot of us just assume what we believe should be or is recyclable and it's not always the case. It's different everywhere. So make sure you check your current location's exact guidelines because even if you have a bag full of recyclable materials and you put one item in there that isn't actually recycled in your area, they will throw out the entire bag of recyclable materials for, con for contaminating it with the item that isn't recycled. So you'll be undoing all of that good work. So just follow your guidelines. Um, you can just look it up really easily online, print it out, stick it on your fridge or your wall, and just make sure you're cross-referencing it. And also, they update quite regularly, so maybe check it annually just to make sure that you're still abiding by the waste guidelines. I know it's a little bit complicated because it's different everywhere you go, but it's really important if you would like your waste to be recycled because most things aren't recycled. And then even if we're considering plastics, for example, less than 9% of plastics that we put into recycling are actually recycled. We could do a lot better. The system can do a lot better and we can do better as individuals to reduce our waste at home through just following the guidelines. We all create a little bit of food waste and food scraps, I know for me personally, are the majority of my food waste. So to eliminate this, compost them. If you don't have a composting scheme or a garden to create your own compost, you can reuse your food waste and your food scraps and make them into things like broths and stocks and things like that. Doing shorter, cooler laundry cycles means that we'll be using fewer resources and also our clothes will last a lot longer. There'll be less damage to them each time we wash them, so we'll get a lot more use out of our clothes and also we won't be using as much resources to heat our clothes and to go on for longer cycles. And quite honestly, we just don't need it. A lot of us just automatically use a cycle that is intended for really dirty, grimy, greasy clothes. But really, if we're just doing uh, the usual weekly wash, we can do it on about 20 to 30 minute cycle at about 30 degrees. We don't need any more than that. Most washing machines come with an eco cycle or just a shorter cycle, so check the settings for that. Make sure it's about 20 to 30 degrees and about 20 to 30 minutes will do your clothes just fine and I promise you won't notice a difference. Air drying our laundry, of course uses fewer resources, we're just letting them dry naturally in the air, hang up a washing line outside, or if it's a rainy day, you can hang them up inside. I don't even own a dryer and my clothes last a really long time. Again, every time we put them through a tumble dry, it really damages them, so your clothes will last a lot longer and we'll be using fewer resources again. If we're boiling only as much water as we need, then we won't be using the extra resources to boil extra water, that just cools down anyway or gets poured down the sink so this one is just a really simple easy tip but it adds up over the time especially if you're like me and you drink a lot of tea I'm home alone a lot of the time I work from home and so I'm here by myself and I don't need to heat the entire apartment when I'm on my own I just need to heat myself because I'm cold so I will get a hot water bottle and use blankets um, rather than just putting the heating on to heat every single room, I just need to heat myself and that's what I use and it works actually even better than heating. Now if you are going to be using heating or any other kind of gas or electric, I'd recommend switching to a green energy supplier. Now when I moved into this apartment just over a year ago now, I switched immediately to Octopus Energy. The energy supplier that came with the apartment was not green at all and so I wanted to make that switch immediately. So I knew that at least my energy was going to be green and renewable. It's something that a lot of us put off for a while because we think it's complicated or difficult. So I wanted to just make sure that I moved into this apartment with a fresh start and a fresh clean slate and I wanted to just get those little things that we tend to put off just 
done. So with Octopus Energy, I get 100% green electricity that comes from sources like the sun, the wind, and water. And even their parent company is one of the largest investors in solar power energy in the UK. So their ethics do run throughout their business model. Octopus Energy is all online, so it's easy to navigate and also eliminate long calls and queues and paper bills. And with Octopus Energy, you won't be paying a premium for greener energy. In fact, it's actually less expensive than most brown energy suppliers. They were also recently in the news for actually paying their customers to use extra renewable energy that was generated from high winds. I'll link to this article below. They've also been using some of their advertising space to highlight people's climate crisis themed artwork. I'll link some on the screen here and I'll share more in the description box below as well. I personally love using Octopus Energy and I'm really excited to be collaborating with them on this video. There are a lot of greenwashing companies out there who are pretending to care about their customers and the climate emergency for a better marketing angle, but Octopus Energy really do care and are really pushing for customers to care about their energy supplier again. As I'm teaming up with them for this video, they've also been kind enough to offer us a link, which means that when you use it to sign up to Octopus Energy, you get 50 pounds off. I'll be linking that down below as well for anybody who's looking to switch to a green energy supplier. I like to create my own cleaning products and DIY them using natural ingredients like bicarbonate of soda, lemon juice, distilled white vinegar. This not only ensures that my home and my space is not going to be filled with toxic and harsh chemicals, it also means that they're not going to be flushed down the drains into the oceans, causing so much damage to wildlife. This also means that I use plastic free and reusable cloths and cleaning products rather than plastic and single use sponges. I like to use old bits of materials like old tea towels or bits of t-shirts or I'll buy cotton rags. Using a dishwasher is really resource heavy, so washing our dishes by hand is a lot more eco-friendly and to make that even more eco-friendly is to um, use just as much water as you need rather than keeping the tap running the whole time. We can just reuse the water and use fresh water just to rinse quickly. This way we'll be saving on gallons and gallons of water every day. Buying secondhand furniture means that we're not creating a demand for new products to be made. Even products that are made out of more eco-friendly materials, it's better to buy secondhand and not create the demand because even the material when they're eco-friendly are gonna have to be processed and created and use electronic items to create them. So it always uses at least some kind of resource. So if we can buy secondhand, we're eliminating it completely and producing the least amount of waste. I filled my home with secondhand furniture and absolutely love it. It feels really great to find that piece that you love and get a bargain as well, because it's always a lot cheaper. It always feels nice to hand over money to an individual rather than a corporation. And it gives me a really lovely community sense as well. I tend to use places like Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, eBay, and I've actually found a lot of furniture just on the side of the road, completely free. Eating plant-based is one of the biggest things that we can do for the environment. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of greenhouse gas emissions as well as deforestation, ocean dead zones, water pollution, habitat destruction, species extinction. So just by eliminating animals and their fluids from our diets, we're doing one of the most impactful things to benefit our planet. Making sure our fridge and our pantry is just stocked up with all the yummy fruits and veggies and grains and nuts and seeds that we love is going to make it really easy if you're transitioning to a plant-based diet. All of my favorite go-to and really simple, easy plant-based recipes are all in my ebook. I'll link that down below as well if you're keen to check that out. Food prepping is another really great way to reduce energy because we're not cooking constantly. We can cook in big batches and then just save that for the next day and eat it cold or just reheat it, which takes a lot less energy. Go paperless every chance you can get with your banking and your bills. Try to get it digital, and if you don't absolutely need to get it in paper form, then just opt for not. If there is something that you need in paper form, see if you can get it electronically sent over to you as a PDF or a Pages or Word document. Things like contracts can also be signed at DocuSign and other websites similar, and you can always create a folder or have a hard drive dedicated for these paper goods. A lot of shops also offer now digital receipts, which I really appreciate. I just give them my email address and they'll send it over rather than printing one out, which is great. And I'd definitely like to see more of that in more shops. 
reuse or repurpose objects that you have in your house that you no longer need to use in their original form or they've broken so they no longer fit their original form. See if you can still use them. Some of the things around my house I use for propagation, for planting new baby sapling plants in or for holding smaller objects. Batteries use so many resources to create and are not widely recycled and even when they are they're really really toxic so to avoid them altogether is the ideal so buying items with the forethought that you don't want to also have to buy batteries to use them is great. More often than not I've found that I can buy an item similar to the one I was looking for but that doesn't require batteries. It's great because I don't need to keep buying something so it saves on money as well because I don't need to replace the batteries but also I know that I'm using far fewer batteries which tend to die really easily and they need to be sent to recycling and it's just best to avoid the whole situation altogether. Switch to eco-friendly light bulbs, another really simple, easy, but effective tip. Growing your own as much as possible is great. Even if you don't have a big garden to grow your own fruits and vegetables in, we can all use a windowsill to grow herbs and easy to grow plants like tomatoes. Buying secondhand books is great. It's not only a lot cheaper, but it also saves on resources. Borrow from a friend if they've recommended one to you or go to your local library and ask them to get it in stock if it's not already there. Use organic, natural materials in your home as much as possible, like cotton, linen, hemp, bamboo, things like blankets and duvets and pillows. Keep an eye on the materials that you have coming into your home and try to avoid things that have synthetic and plastic materials woven into them. Ditch the tin foil in the kitchen when cooking and use silicone sheets instead. These are not the most sustainable material in themselves, but because they're reusable, they're far more eco-friendly than using tin foil every time and constantly getting rid of it. Which also is largely not recycled when it has any kind of food contamination on it anyway. I bought mine around 10 years ago and they're still going strong and I still use them every single week and they're great and it means that I haven't used any single-use products in the kitchen for cooking. Similarly, you can use the cling film or saran wrap as it's called in some parts of the world and use things like glass containers to store your food. Not only is this better for you because you're not going to be ingesting some of the plastics that get seeped into our food when our food is still hot, but it's also going to be saving on the environment and you're not going to be using single-use things that you're just chucking away. Also, the thin types of plastic like cling film are some of the least recyclable materials, so things like cling film are pretty much guaranteed never to be recycled anyway. Use sustainable toilet paper. There are a few brands out there at the moment who are using recycled paper or bamboo. And this is something that we all use every single day, whether we're going to the toilet or blowing our nose. Toilet paper is something that is consumed at an extremely high rate, so if we can make that switch to something more sustainable, it's gonna make a big impact in our home. Shower less often. I know this is gonna grate some people up the wrong way, but if you can shower less regularly, that's gonna really help on water usage as well. We use so much water, more than any of us really realize every time we shower, gallons and gallons of water, and we should be asking ourselves whether we really need to. At this point, I'm showering around two to three times a week. Depending on the week and what I've done, obviously it changes, but generally two to three times a week, and I'm fresh as a daisy. It's also a lot healthier because our natural body oils do our skin a lot of favors, and we shouldn't just be washing that off every day. So if you're somebody who showers every day, unless you're working a really filthy, dirty job, I'd ask yourself whether you really need to be, and try and shower every other day and then maybe just two or three times a week. Also reducing the time in the shower. I know a lot of us take really long showers and it's really not necessary to wash our bodies, our face and our hair. Shouldn't really take more than five to 10 minutes. And if you are taking a long time because you're shaving your legs, for example, then you can turn off the water while you're not using it, shave and then turn it back on while you rinse. Even those of us who are really conscious about what comes into our home get things sent to us sometimes. So reusing the items that are sent to us and the boxes and the packaging that they come in to use as storage boxes around the home or wrapping paper or to be used again to send out and parcel to somebody else is a great way to at least reuse those items. 
Rather than buying an electronic device to purify your air, you can use plants which are natural air purifiers. Plants like the mother-in-law's tongue and forms of ivy are excellent air purifiers. All plants are amazing at air purifying, so the more the better, but there are some specific ones that are even better at air purifying. I'll leave an article down below about it, but basically get yourself some plants, if you can take care of them. Using essential oils to scent your home creates not only a much more pleasant scent, I personally believe, but also you're not going to be using spray cans and aerosols and cleaning products with added chemicals and perfumes and alcohols in them. I also think it's just a much nicer, cleaner, more pleasant smell. And you're going to be greatly reducing package size because they tend to come in just little glass bottles and they're very potent so you need just a couple of drops rather than buying a big aerosol or spray bottle that tend to come in plastic, non-recyclable, single use and they never last very long. Now there are lots of ways you can use essential oils to scent your home from adding it to your homemade cleaning products or diffusing it or adding it to an oil burner, whatever suits you. I know in the UK we don't really do aircon because it never really gets warm enough to have that here, but for those of you who live in warmer climates, try opening a window and using a fan rather than turning on your air conditioning. This works especially well when you're in the car and it's moving and the wind comes through and it's just so lovely and pleasant. So just try rolling down that window before you try the aircon. Reducing the things you own and using the things you already have as decoration rather than going out and buying decorative objects for that sole purpose is going to save time and money on cleaning and managing them. When we buy new things, it's not just a financial expense, it's also a time and management expense because once we own those items, we're going to have to upkeep them, we're going to have to clean them, we're going to have to clean around them, and it's going to be using our personal resources. Using natural bathroom products is not only going to save on our home and our cells being filled with harsh chemicals, it's also going to stop them being flushed down the drains from the toilet and the sink and the shower drain into the oceans and polluting our water. So using natural products like shampoos and soaps and face washes and moisturizers and anything that you need to use in the bathroom is really going to save and be more eco-friendly. So those are my quick 30 tips on how to create a more sustainable home. I hope you enjoyed them and let me know anything that you would add to this list down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!